Okay, hi, Sec 4 students. This is additional practice, Sec 4 lesson 13. Okay, so let's look at the first question one. The diagram shows a sketch of the graph of y equals to ax to the power of negative 2. So find the value of a. So how do you find the value of a? Now your graph gives you the coordinate 0 0.516, which means that this is the x value and this is the y value, the x and y coordinates. Okay, so what you can do first is you sub in your x and y values into your equation. Okay, so 16 equals to a times 0 0.5 to the power of minus 2. Now, when you have a negative indices or negative powers, you can bring this under your denominator. If you recall back, if you have x to the power of minus 1, this is the same as 1 over x. Okay, so a over 0 0.5 squared. So a equals to 16 times 0 0.5 squared across multiplying these two numbers. And I will get my answer for a, which is 4. So that's the value of a. Okay, now for part B, state the equation of the line of symmetry for this graph. So for this graph, the line of symmetry is exactly in the middle. So your equation is x equals to 0. So this is the line of symmetry. Okay, x equals to 0. Okay, question 2. Sketch the graph of y equals to x times x plus 3. Draw and label the equation of the line of symmetry of y equals to x times x plus 3. Okay, so things that you have to take note of when you want to draw or sketch your graph, you must make sure you have your x and y coordinates. Sorry, x and y intercepts. Okay, x and y intercepts. Second is your turning point. Okay, so turning point. Uh, you can put a cross and it's good to write down the line of symmetry. Okay, so three things, x, y intercepts and your turning point. A lot of symmetry if your question says so, but it's good to include in your graph. Okay, so for the first one, how do you find your x-intercepts? Okay, so x-intercepts means that your y equals to 0. So you need to sub in when y equals to 0, x times x plus 3 equals to 0. So x equals to 0 or x plus 3 equals to 0. So I know the first value of x is 0. For you to find the next one, you have to take x equals to negative 3. Okay? Then find your line of symmetry. Okay, so line of symmetry over here. Okay, they, they draw in first the x-intercepts. So 0 and negative 3. Okay, so line of symmetry, how do you find? you must take both values of your x. Both values of your x intercept, then divide by 2. Okay, so my line of symmetry is exactly in the middle. I'm taking my negative 3 plus my 0, the two x intercepts, and I divide by 2. So I get negative 3 over 2, which gives me minus 1.5. Okay, so negative 1.5 means that's where I will draw in my line of symmetry. But how do you find the turning point? Okay, so I'm drawing in my line of symmetry and you have to label the equation. So x equals to negative 1.5. And if I want to find the turning point, I must sub in x equals to negative 1.5. Okay, so sub this back into your rough equation to get my y value. So your y should be in minus 2.25. Okay, so that's the turning point. I can plot this in. Then I put in my coordinates. So x is negative 1.5, my y is minus 2.25. Then once you finish drawing your graph, please put in your equation. y equals to x times x plus 3. Okay. 
Now, question three, written as products of its prime factors, 264 equals to 2 power 3 times 3 times 11, and 3960 equals to 2 power 3 times 3 squared times 5 times 11. The highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of 264, 3960, and A are 24 and 79,200, respectively. So find the largest possible value of A. Okay, you need to find the largest possible value of this number A. Okay, so what am I writing over here first? Okay, maybe I will show, write down the, the prime factors first, okay? The, the 264 and the 390 is easier for you to compare. So let's record down. So I know that my 264, okay, equals to, wait, what I have in space? Maybe I write, um, let me erase first. Yeah, right over here. Okay, so 264 equals to your 2 power 3 times 3 times 11. Your 3960 equals to 2 power 3 times 3 square times 5 times 11. Okay? So, and I know that my 7 I 200, it's one, is the lowest common multiple. Okay, but let's try to find your 79,200 in terms of the prime factors. So, I'm going to express this in terms of my prime factors. I'm going to draw this data. So, keep dividing by 2. Okay, so keep dividing by 2. Then you get your 19,800 divided by 2. 9,900 divided by 2, 4,950 divided by 2, 2,475. Now, once you come to this step, means you can no longer divide by 2, but you can divide this by 5, okay? Because there's a 5 digit at the back. So, divide by 5, sorry, or you can divide by 3, like what is shown over here. So, 2,475 divided by 3, you get 825. Divide by 3 again, 275. Divide by 5, you get 55. Divide by 5, you get your 11. Okay, so 11 divided by 11 means you get back your 1. So I'm going to express this in terms of the prime factors. So this is 2, power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 5 2s. Oopsies. Okay, so 2 power 5 times your 3 power 2. Then times by 5 square times by 11. Okay, so I will express these way first. I write in my three numbers. Now, I know that my HCF based on your question is 24. Alright, so let's try to express 24 in terms of the prime factors. So, i written over here your, your HCF. Your 24 can be expressed in terms of 2 power 3 times by 3. Okay, so do you guys see that? 2 power 3, you times by 3, that will give you your HCF. Okay, now your LCM is 79,200. This is your LCM. Correct, this is 24. This is 79,200. So how do you find the value of A? Correct? So your A, you want to find the largest possible value of A. So remember, if you want to find your LCM, when you want to look at the, com the prime factors, it has to be the one with the highest power for, for a certain prime number. Correct? That's how you find the, uh, the LCM. So if my LCM contains a 2 power 5, if I... I Remove the highlighted parts first. Huh? So let's look at the numbers below here. Correct. You see that your LCM contains a 2 power 5. But if I look at the first two numbers given, 264 and 3960, there is no 2 power 5. Which means that your 2 power 5 must come from A. Okay, so I know that that's the first value, uh, that's the first 
prime number, I must put for my A. Okay, because 264, there's no 2 power 5. Your 3960, there's no 2 power 5. Okay, so since this is part of my LCM, means it must come from A. Now your 3, how about your, your prime factor for 3? So if I have to look at 264, there's a 3. Your 3960, there's a 3 square. So if I want to try to find a larger, the largest possible value of A, right, I will put in the larger or the higher indeed the power. All right, so I will put in 3 power 2. Agree because your 264 is 3, your 3960 is 3 square. Of course, I will choose the higher power to make it largest. Okay, now let's move on to your 5. So for 5, again, I look at 5, right? Your LCM contains a 5 square. Your 264, there's no 5. Your 3960, there's only a 5. So this 5 square must come from your A again. And then finally, your 11. Do I put this 11 inside? Okay, so if I were to include my 11 over here, let's say my A contains an 11, right? Let's say I put this in green. Huh? If, let's say, you put 11 for your factor of A, for A, right? You realize your HCF will no longer be 2 power 3 times 3. Your HCF will become 2 power 3 times 3 times 11. Because your 264, there's an 11. Your 3960, there's an 11. Correct? But my HCF here says that there's no 11 over here, which means that A should not have an 11. That's why I don't put 11 for part of my A. So these three numbers will be the, if I multiply, that will give me the largest possible value of A. So can you do your multiplication? 2 power 5 times 3 square times of 5 square. So I should get my answer for A, 7,200. Okay, so this one takes a bit of analysis. You have to compare your prime factors first. And then you see what makes sense. Which one appears over here, which one doesn't appear on this number. Can okay? So I will just summarize again. 2 power 5 is because your LCM contains a 2 power 5. So it has to come from A. 3 is where I'm using the larger power, correct? Because your 264 is a 3. Your 3960 is a 3 square. And you want larger, so I choose the higher power. So I put the 3 square. Correct? 5 square is because your 264, there is no 5. Your 3960 is a 5 only. But your LCM here states there's a 5 square. So this 5 square must also come from A. And then finally, I do not put 11. Why? Because there's already an 11 for 264 and your 3960. Which means that your A should not contain an 11. If it contains an 11, then your HCF will become 2 power 3 times 3 times 11. Which is not what you want. Okay? Good. Okay, let's move on to question 4. So question 4 is solve the inequality 2 minus x over 3 greater than x minus 2. Okay, so I think you learned this in sec 2, sec 3 inequalities. So first thing you need to remove is your denominator of 3, which means you have to multiply your right hand side by 3, your left hand side by 3 as well, times 3 on both sides. Get 2 minus x greater than 3x minus 6. So when you multiply by 3, you times 3 for your x and you times 3 for your minus 2. Okay, once you get to this step, shift over all your x terms to your left hand side and your right your numbers to your right hand side. So minus x minus 3x because you are changing your position, changing the side, and then minus 6 minus 2. This is a positive 2 when you shift over becomes a negative 2. So negative x minus your 3x, I get negative 4x greater than negative 8. So if I want to find for x, remember when you are dividing by a negative number, you have to swap the inequality sign. 
I'm dividing this by negative 4. Same for this side, I'm dividing by negative 4. Okay, so you have to switch the inequality sign. So part B, hence state the largest integer value of x. Okay, so since my x must be lesser than 2, means that the largest integer must be 1. Okay, question 5. A stone thrown, thrown, a stone thrown. Okay, from the top of a vertical seaside cliff, eventually falls into the sea. The height of the stone above the sea after t seconds in is h. Sorry, the height of the stone above the sea after t seconds is h meters, where h is given by the equation h equals to 30 plus 70 minus 2 t squared. So a stone is thrown from the top of a cliff, it's going into the sea. Okay, now the table below gives some corresponding values of t and h. So t is your time in seconds. So this is your seconds. H is your height in meters. So part A, calculate the value of A. How do you find the value of A? You must sub in your T equals to 2. Okay, so you use this equation. Sub in the values, uh, sorry, your T equals to 2. You should get the value of A, which is 36. Okay, so this is 36. Now, part B, using a scale of 2 cm to 1 second, draw a horizontal t-axis for 0, t6. Okay, so the range is from 0 to 6 for my t. And using a scale of 2 cm to 5 meters, draw a vertical h-axis for 0, h, and 40. On your axis, plot the points given in the table and join them with a smooth curve. Okay, so let's go on to part B. So part B you should get something like this. So this one is actually your 2 cm to 1 second. Okay, uh, for me, I will write down my scales. So let's write your scale. So scale for your t-axis. Okay, your t-axis. 2 cm to 1 unit. Sorry, 2 cm to 1 second. Okay, and then for your h-axis, okay, 5, 5, sorry, 5, uh, 2 cm to 5 meters. So I'm just referring back to what your question tells you. So this is a 2 cm, there should be 10 boxes. Okay, same for this, there should be 10 boxes. So draw your, draw your graph. Plot in the points from 0 to 6. Okay, so actually you shouldn't have this 7 here. This one don't need. Draw in your arrows, which is also not drawn over here. Okay, draw in your arrows. And then plot in your points. So the points is given in the table. Just, and then you draw your smooth curve. Okay, so part C, find the, find the greatest height reached by the stone. So your greatest height, if I look at the graph, it should be around 36 meters. Okay, so this is um, every one, one box, right, is 0 0.5 because I'm going from 35 to 40. Okay, 35 to 40 is an increment of 5 meters and there's 10 boxes. So every one box you go up is increased by 0 0.5 meters. Okay, so this line here is like two boxes above your 35 which it gives me around 36 meters, okay? Now, part D, how long was the stone more than 3 meters above the top of the cliff? Above the top of the cliff. How long was the stone more than 3 meters above the top? Okay, so 3 meters above the top. My, my cliff is 30 meters, right? Because at 0 seconds, my hitch is 30. Okay, so you want to at least be 3 meters above. I should be looking at the 33 meters. Maybe I write this in. Okay, so my cliff is 30 meters from sea level. Okay, 30 meters above sea level. 
uh, or 30 meters for the height. Maybe I don't confuse. Okay, it's 30 meters. So if I want to find, I want my stone to be 3 meters above, right? Means that it has to be around 33 meters. So I'm looking at the 33 meter for the height here. Okay, so 33 meters. So draw your dotted line. Look for the two points at which the stone is 33 meters. Okay, so you see that it's actually from, if I look at the time in seconds, you did, oh, they never write in for you. Okay, so it should be around three. This is three seconds. And then this is around 0 0.5 seconds. So look at your own graph. Huh? From 0 0.5 seconds to three seconds, that's the time that the stone is three meters above the top of the cliff. Okay, so how long is it? Subtract your seconds, it will be 2.5 seconds. And then for part E, part I, by drawing a tangent, find the gradient of the graph at 426. Okay, so 426 means is this point. So how to find, draw in a straight line using a ruler, draw your tangent here. And then find a, a very nice coordinate. Okay, two sets of coordinates which you can easily find the gradient. Okay, so it, it's around 335. I have these two. So this one is the 335. And then this one is your 517, this point. Okay, this point is your 335. Your areas of the other marks. Okay, so draw in your right angle triangle and then you can find your gradient. So gradient is your rise over run. So your y coordinate subtract first, 17 minus 35 over 5 minus 3, which gives me a gradient of negative 9. So it's quite steep. Okay, so part 2 explain what the gradient in part EI represents. So what does this gradient represent? Remember, your gradient is your rise over run. So I must look at the y-axis or the th-axis. In this case, is the change. This is the change in height. Okay. Over your change in time. Okay, change in height over your change in time. So... Height in this case will be your distance, is similar to distance. So when you have a change in height over time, it will be as good as the change in the distance because it's actually going, it's traveling, but this is going in a vertical manner. Okay, so your gradient will represent the speed, in this case, in meters per second of the stone when t equals to 4. So in other words, okay, your speed is, 9 meters per second. Okay, when t equals to 4. So that's the gradient. That's what the gradient represents. Okay. Okay, so I will end off today's additional practice review. Thank you for watching.